Hello, um, my name is Paul Probst. I'm the inventor of the blind sight units, and, uh, inventor and designer. Um, and here at Jory Canid, uh, we're doing some videos uh, today. Uh, and one of them uh, is this one, which is on how to change batteries uh, on the uh, blind sight Charlie. Um, the blind sight Charlie is the lightest unit, okay? And uh, it takes uh, a very small battery. Anyway, you're going to see that in just a minute. We're going to dig right into it. Here we go. So here is our, uh, in, uh, obviously, artificial puppy <laughs> wearing a Charlie. And this is probably be uh, in the condition it's going to be in um, when you get it. In the United States, um, these units are shipped active. The batteries are in them, so you can just put them on the dog. Uh, outside the United States, you're going to have to do what we're doing here, which is to replace the battery, or to put batteries in it. So anyway, I happen to know, as a matter of fact, there is no batteries in this unit because we just used this one for another video. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, go through the battery change procedure to put some batteries in there. Now I have my two batteries here. Uh, these are A23 alkaline uh, batteries. They're also known as 23As. Um, uh, a couple other things there, a garage door opener battery, a V23GA, um, let's see, MN21, LRV08, but most of them are going to have a marking on that says 23A or A23. So that's, these are the batteries we want, okay? So now here's, we're going to, we're going to, we're going to uh, do this. Now we're going to need a couple tools. Um, when you get your Charlie, you're going to have this bag full of accessories. Uh, in some miscellaneous, usually gallon plastic bag, but you see there's a couple tools in here and Velcro tie wraps, Velcro tie wraps, that sort of thing. These are, those are, uh, all of this stuff is to help you. Most of this is really about mounting. Uh, there's an extra gasket in there, uh, some extra mounting rings and screws, and the parts we're going to use today are the screwdriver and wrench, so I'm going to get those out. Okay. Now, admittedly, and I'll put that on the bag on the side, when you get these two tools, normally they have, um, just truth in advertising here, usually they'll have a uh, adhesive label stuck on them, and the one in the screwdriver I find it particularly obnoxious, but it comes off fairly easily. Anyway, so there's our, our, our uh, the included wrench and screwdriver, and that's what you're going to need. Now, I'm going to take the unit first, I'm going to go and unbuckle the unit, and I'm only, we're not going to, we're not going to take everything apart here. You don't have to, all right? Once we get the thing off the dog here, you're going to see there's really not much to it. So uh, I'm getting the harness off the dog. Okay, I'm going to put this, uh, the artificial dog, stuffed dog in the side. And uh, now I'm going to ask uh, the camera to come in a little bit closer here. Why don't you pause for a moment? So we have this off the dog now. And uh, I'm going to tell you right now, the biggest pain about uh, doing anything to do with one of these is uh, remove, is changing the batteries and having to remove the screws and everything. Uh, there's only four screws and there's no nuts on the uh, other two blind sights for dogs in the aluminum case. Uh, this, the compromises had to be made a little bit different and to get the weight down and everything, we want this with this extremely strong but very lightweight plastic and uh, with a clamshell case. So now, you're going to see just how long it's going to take because I'm going to do it right here in front of you. All right? Um, yeah, no, no trick photography here. I'm going to leave. The unit's going to stay on the harness. There's no reason to take the unit off the harness. Okay? Because what's mounted to the harness, really, if you think about it, is just the base plate, the bottom half of the clamshell. So we'll just leave that there. Okay? And the nuts, really, um, these are nylon-filled nuts. So the first couple of turns when you put a screwdriver on them is kind of hard. But then you, you, you'll, you'll feel them. Like here, it's just loosened up. Well, now you can just take your fingers and, and take the nut, spin the nut right off. So uh, if you get used to doing this, it's really not too bad. But I'm not, I'm not going to uh, tell anybody this isn't at least potentially a pain. 
you have here six screws, six washers, 12, uh, or six nuts, and 12 washers. You can actually close this thing up, especially a dog who doesn't go outside very much. You could probably close this up with four, just, and that would be just fine. Um, it takes six screws to make a um, even pressure on the gasket. That's that little black stripe you see between the top and the bottom. Okay, so now I've got all those screws, washers out. There, that part's done. Now, here we are, just like it was on the dog. Here's the front here, the strap that goes around the belly. Here's the top. All I'm going to do is tilt this forward, okay? And I said there would be no batteries in there. There isn't. Now, you're going to have to pay attention on the batteries, especially if you use American, I won't say necessarily American-made because I think they're pretty much all made in China or somewhere else anyway. But the American branded batteries are black on both ends. This is Toshiba. It's a Japanese battery. You notice it's red on this end. If you can see that, let's see how close we can get. And it's black on this end. That's virtually every battery made except for a couple American brands. The American ones are black on both ends and it makes it really kind of difficult to tell. If your eyes aren't good, it makes it difficult to tell which is the positive end. These are red positive, black negative. But the positive and negative marks themselves in a the battery are very hard to read. So we actually like the Toshibas, the GLs, uh, the, uh, what is that, EBL, a couple brands like that. We really like. They seem to work as well as anything, uh, as, as uh, they, at least from our experience, Ever Ready or Rayovac, anything like that. Um, but having the color coding, you know which is which. Now, so here's the unit. Okay. Battery case, the spring gets the negative. As with most of them, but you notice a lot of things have an alternate back. You know, you have the positive this way, positive this way. This they point in both the same direction. You see the springs at both. Hold the spring down a little bit with your thumb, and push the battery, the negative end of the battery, against it. Snap the positive part in. I'm going to do that again and hold it down, that spring down a little bit. Keeps that speaks the spring from like getting permanently bent up if you you know do that maneuver wrong. So here we are, we're set to go. We make sure the wires will go back inside the case. We close it. You can see changing the batteries, you know, the only thing that takes the time is the screws. That, that's, that's it. So now I'm going to do the whole thing here again. I'm going to, uh, that's, I had a screw with a washer on it already, so I put a, uh, here's another screw that the washer didn't fall off. I'll put that there. Put a washer on the top, put this nut on. And as I'm talking to you and not doing this the quickest way I can, if you look at the time on the video, <laughs> that's about the longest it should take you to do it. Unless you're talking to somebody else. Yeah. So let's see. Okay. Luckily, the washers tend to stay on the screws, the one washer does, so you pretty much just have to put the top washer on. And I want to show you especially about tightening these because, now you see the nuts look white on top, that's because they're filled with nylon plastic. And that's a good thing, too. I'll show you why. I'm going to put my, my wrench on here. Now, I'm not making complete circles. I'm making like half turns. One, two, three, four. That's it. Here again. One, two, three, four. Remember, I put them on finger tight. Right? So what stopped them is the nylon. One, two, three, four. I'm going all the way around here. The way my wrist moves, it's about four turns, maybe three or five for yours, who knows. You want to just touch the gasket. We're not, we're not, we're not torquing this thing down and compressing the gasket at all. The neoprene gasket is a very soft one and all we have to do is touch it. There, so now you can see there's the bottom, that black stripe is the gasket, there's the top, 
you see the screws, ends of the screws are all the way through the white part in only, you know, four half turns, right? So it's ready to go back on the dog. So uh, keep, let her, keep it rolling. And I'm going to put our little, our little pooch back up here. And, uh, uh. And as I doubt that any real dog is exactly this shape. <laughs> there we go. I doubt that I, most dogs I'd have to flip around in a circle to do this, but I just reach under. But here's the guy. Whoops. Now, once it's back on, I center it in the back, make sure it's centered, and, uh, uh, oh, I didn't cut this tie wrap off earlier. Should have. There we go. Um, like I said, we just used this one for a video about an hour ago. Now, one thing to look at, uh, after you get this back in the dog, it looks fine. Here, make sure that this is pointed more or less straight ahead. And we want it within about uh, 20 or 30 degrees of, of the horizon, okay? It doesn't have to be pointed dead at the horizon, but the whole reason for having this ring and everything here is so that it can move and keep itself pointed more or less the horizon. The length of this cable here is how you adjust right-left. And I know it's point a little bit to the right. Now it's more straight ahead. So there we go. We're all done. So here we are, we've uh, changed the batteries. In this case, really, I just inserted batteries. Um, we uh, made sure that the transducer up in the front here, that's the part that makes the sound, is pointed more or less straight ahead. And uh, we're ready to go. This dog is ready to go and, and, uh, you know, and do whatever. If I want to make sure that the thing is on, this little window, you know, here's the end of the cable, that hole at the other end, I look around in there, Ah, and you have to look way down in there as an angle. There's the little white light that tells me that this thing is running. Uh, if you have exceptionally good ears and or you're very young, and I mean under 20, you can put your ear up against the uh, uh, transducer and hear it. Uh, I've seen some kids, really young kids, under 10 years old, that could actually hear this from about 10 feet away. Uh, most people age 30 or more have no chance of hearing this thing. So... Um, uh, because it's very high pitched and very faint, and that's not the part the dog hears. So there we are. We've got we've we've uh, uh, we've got the whole thing. Before we can, we uh, we uh, stop here, I want to tell you about a couple other tools. We include these two tools. Okay, they come in, they come in the kit. Uh, I'm going to put them back in the kit. Okay, there's the whole there's the whole mounting and accessory kit that comes with it. So almost always he's going to come mounted on a harness unless you give us a good reason not to. But you may want to change the mounting. You may want to use a different kind of harness. We try to make sure you have everything you need in here. Okay? So we got that. Now, there is a couple other tools that are handy. All right? Like I said, we usually mount this in a harness, but we do include tie wraps. Uh, we don't include one of these. Oh, you'll see one on the last page of our manual. This is a thing called a flush cutter. You can get them in craft departments, like at Walmart. They have them. You'll look at that. These little pliers, craft pliers, where you, things where you can make jewelry and stuff. Uh, other craft things. And they'll have these, they're called flush cutters, all right? So a flush cutter is really good if you have to cut off very many tie wraps. It lets you cut the tie wrap in such a way that there's no sharp edge. And if you have to cut tie wraps, um, especially anything to go on your dog, and you don't have something like that, uh, if there's a piece of tie wrap sticking out, you might want to take a, lay, lay, a lighter and melt the little sharp part to round it off so you know nobody gets hurt, nobody gets cut. The other thing is a pair of needle nose pliers. These are ordinary needle nose, buy them anywhere. What this is for is if this part here gets loose, all right, if you notice it's loose, there's a plastic nut that looks just like this piece here. This is molded onto this, but there's a nut on the inside. And you can't get a wrench in there, a conventional wrench. It is too tight. But you can take the points of a needle nose and tighten it down if you have to. By the way, that has not been a big problem so far, but it is there. There's one other trick you might want to know. And you see these parts here, this is bent here, 
and then this is bent here. Um, I'm going to have the camera come in uh, closer in just a second. I want you to take a look at these. Uh, what I want to show you is this here, this area right here, and this area right here, these little bends. On each of these, I'm going to bring one of these up a little bit closer so you can see it. I don't know, can it, is, it, is it showing up clear? And then you can see this one here, too. Okay, what those are is that's a, if you've ever heard the term shrink tubing, that's a piece of shrink tubing. This shrink tubing is special. It's lined with a melting adhesive, a, a thermally, um, a thermal forming adhesive. And what that means is when we put it on the wire, this piece here is straight. But if you want it to hold a form like this, you heat, heat not the wire, but gently heat the tubing here that's, uh, that's, that's it's shrunk down onto the wire and it's stuck with this adhesive. If, if I, I, the camera's not going to show us, but there's actually a little adhesive oozing out of the end of this thing. Um, if you look very closely, you can see this little whiter stuff at the edges. Uh, if you want to bend this a different way, like, like I said, you want to mount this on a different harness, you have a different harness. For instance, you need to, if you have a service dog or something, you need to mount this on a different kind of harness. Well, what you do is just take a lighter, ordinary butane lighter, and gently warm this, all right, until it's about as hot as boiling water. You know, it's not gonna, you're not gonna set it on fire, you're not gonna melt the plastic, but it's a little uncomfortable to the touch. When you do that, you can straighten this back out, you can bend it the other way, bend it any way you want, and just hold it in position for a couple of minutes. And when you let go, it, you might want to blow on it. It should be nice. It could be cool down, and it will hold the shape like that. So uh, that's which is one of the reasons we're using it. We could have put a strain relief to help protect the wire of many different kinds of strain reliefs, including springs we could have had on there. But we decided with a dog in the dog's environment, this would be the best, and it also gives you, uh, the dog owner, the client, the opportunity to remount this and rebend that some other way that's convenient for you. Okay. Okay, so that's it uh, for the battery change, and uh, you know we talked about the meltable tubing and all that kind of stuff. Uh, if you uh, have a, a Charlie, we hope this is all you need to know about changing batteries. If you're contemplating a Charlie uh, for your dog, uh, and when I say Charlie, I mean this particular type of blind sight, as there is several. Um, this is the lightest weight. Three point, you're talking about three ounces for this little part here and a little bit more for the cable. Uh, and, and by the way, on a very lightweight harness made by Scott Pat, these, these are a special harness and the harness weighs almost nothing. Um, uh, we, we hope that you've uh, really did uh, uh, find this informative. Now I'm going to mention one other possibility here. Uh, recently it has come up that uh, some people want to put these on larger dogs. This is intended for small dogs. Literally. The whole purpose of this unit was to take us down to 10 pounds for a dog. And we're looking at another way to do this less than this with a, a tow behind. But um, uh, uh, some of the people who have larger units have had uh, a problem with uh, the aluminum, heavy aluminum boxes marking the floor or something. They would not do, like to try this. So if you if you are contemplating buying a blind sight unit, you have it now. That's one of the things you might want to consider. The, uh, the largest blind sight for dogs, the B, is one pound. The uh, middle unit, the S2, is about a little under six ounces. And this is about half that. The other two sit up here in the front. And when the dog lays down, they do hit the floor. And if you have a soft enough floor or a floor that marks easily, yeah, the, the aluminum box may leave a little mark on the floor. So, so uh, uh, that is always a possibility. We have talked to people about making um, a glove to go over our boxes, and we haven't found anybody that can do it at a price that either I or our clients are liable to want to spend. Um, so uh, I think if you want, if you need to worry about mark, uh, if you're going to worry about marking, uh, Charlie might be the one. Anyway, um, uh, have a very pleasant day. We hope you find this useful. Um, and if you're using, a, uh, if you've just gotten a Charlie recently and you got it on your dog, we know you're having fun. Uh, 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 we wish you and, and your dog all the best. Thank you.